Hey there, gamers. You're probably wondering why I have this big, huge sword on my shoulder here. Well, this review holds a very special place in my heart. But before I announce what game I'm reviewing, I would like to ask you a question. What kind of hack and slash games did you grow up playing with back in the old days? Maybe Golden Axe in the arcades, or on Sega Genesis, or maybe the Turtles in Time games on both the arcades and the Super Nintendo? Or how about Devil May Cry on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360? Well, what can I say about Devil May Cry? It's one of Capcom's biggest franchises of all time. I mean, it has everything you'd expect in a hack and slash game. You have big swords, big guns, stylish action, and busty babes. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about in my review of Devil May Cry 4. Devil May Cry 4 is a hack and slash game and storied franchise made by Capcom, and its emphasis is for players to just tear their enemies to shreds with big swords as well as lock and load with big guns. It has everything that makes this game just as good as both the first and third game in the franchise. Quick action, stylish combos, and a crap ton of other stuff. Be prepared to take your first call, because before you go on your first demon hunt, you will need to be educated about this game's lore. Devil May Cry 4 takes place right after the battle between Dante and Mundus on Mallet Island. Dante receives notice from Lady that the holy city of Fortuna is being operated by a religious cult that wants to exploit the Dark Knight Sparta in secrecy while maintaining the truth to the people about his bravery and heroism. Dante sets up a plan to bring the cult down, and he sets its sights high on the city of Fortuna. Meanwhile, a young and ruthless, but caring swordsman by the name of Nero appears in Fortuna's Grand Cathedral to honor a thousand-year tradition of Sparta. As everyone pray for God's enlightenment amongst them, Dante crashes into the church and assassinates the Pope, Sanctus. Everyone runs from him, but Nero stays behind and puts up a good fight against Dante. The youthful spirit is being toyed with the son of Sparta, but he reveals that his right arm has the skin and anatomy of a demon to fight back. The battle ensues with Nero and Dante at an equal draw. Dante retreats and tells Nero that the truth of his actions will come to light eventually. Whether he believes in Dante or not, Nero must learn the truth about Sanctus's religious cult, and he must work together with Dante to stop the madness and save his love interest, Kyrie, from being an imprisoned sacrifice for the savior of a false god. A dark tale, but a very good one at that, as the franchise always has a great story for every game. Just like in previous games in the series, your objective is to complete 20 missions that will lead you one step closer to learning the truth of the whole story. Within these 20 missions lie four different stages in the game. Fortuna Town, Fortuna Castle, a big jungle, and the religious cult's main headquarters. Many of these main missions will have big bosses for you to fight, key items to obtain and progress further, or arriving at certain locations to trigger cutscenes that will lead you to the next level. Throughout most of the game, you play as Nero, with his big sword, the Red Queen, a supersized magnum gun called the Blue Rose, and his Devil Bringer arm. Nero is definitely a good choice for anyone who is at the beginning stages of playing a Devil May Cry game, as his Devil Bringer grab attacks and his air slashes with his sword will break down a demon's defense from staying alive. You will go through many different levels where you will face a horde of demons, solve many puzzles, collect orbs for the purchasing of items, and proud souls to purchase many different abilities for your weapons and devil transformations. Even when traversing through the stages, you will uncover recover items to save you from trouble, and key items to ensure progression to different areas. Let us not forget that there are secret areas where you can complete secret missions to earn blue orb fragments to increase your health. It has returned, but some of the secret missions are not a walk in the park, for they are a bit more difficult for the average gamer. As you play Nero's story, you will travel from Fortuna Town to Sanctus's headquarters. At the halfway point of the game, you will change from playing as Nero to playing as Dante as he heads back in the opposite direction. Playing as Dante should be smooth sailing for anyone who has played Devil May Cry 3 as his attacks and abilities have returned this time around. 
but the improved AI on the enemies make Dante seem like a character to be used for the advanced and hardcore fans of the franchise. You don't finish Dante to complete the whole game like you did with Chris Redfield from Resident Evil Code Veronica, but you return to play as Nero for the last two missions of the story. Every little and big detail in the missions are there for you to understand on what you have to do, and the harder it gets will leave you for an ultimate challenge. Every weapon you have for Nero and Dante will always have different ways on how they attack. To save some time and effort, I will explain to you the basic controls while the others are mostly done with the different button and thumbstick combinations. Now these are the PlayStation 3 controls only. Alright, moving your character is done with the left thumbstick. Moving your camera by 360 degrees is completed by moving the right thumbstick. Jumping is easily executed by tapping the X button, and firing your gun is done with the square button. Now this is where the fun factor is applied in battle with the use of your melee weapons. Using your character's melee weapon is executed properly with the triangle button. Now Nero's Devil Bringer arm is easily utilized to grab your enemies and completing throw attacks. The simple way to do this is by pressing the circle button. Do not forget that locking onto your target is coin essential to battle, so make sure you hit the R1 trigger in the process. These are the basic controls for both characters. Dante's four fighting styles from Devil May Cry 3 are back, and they are easily switchable in the gameplay. It's really simple, but I'll let you figure out how that works. Other than that, the controls are as solid as they can possibly be for a AAA title by Capcom. The design of this game is very similar to Devil May Cry 3, but it has greatly improved with the more realistic character models, but nothing in the game is realistic to begin with. Not to mention, the level design looks really well done, likewise. Upon further study, the game's engine is done by Capcom's in-house game engine called MT Framework 2.0. MT Framework started out on the sixth generation of gaming, and it was a staple for the game's graphics engine around when the first Devil May Cry was released on the PlayStation 2. The updated version of the game's engine focuses more on realistic physics, detailed characters and stages, and sharp lighting. By far, Devil May Cry 4, Lost Planet, Dead Rising, Street Fighter 4, and Resident Evil 5 have been taking advantage of the MT Framework engine, and it is on par in being a powerful game engine like Square Enix's Crystal Tools and Epic Games' Unreal engines, as well as the Havoc and PhysX game physics. To summarize, Devil May Cry 4 looks pretty, but the lighting and shading could use some tweaking because they are too strong for the game. Other than that, it still looks pretty damn good for this day. Following in Masami Ueda's footsteps with the awesome sounds of the game's original soundtrack, Tetsuya Shibata started out his work on the series with the third game's soundtrack, which is my favorite soundtrack in-game in the franchise, by the way, and he reprises his assistance with Resident Evil 4 musician Shusaku Uchiyama. Gothic hair metal really works well as it gives the gamer a sense of what both Nero and Dante are going through in certain events. The music genre is very reminiscent of the Guilty Gear series, as well as the new Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. With every game out there, there seems to be the use of making sounds that come from realistic sources with Foley artists. Mostly the sounds from Devil May Cry 3 are present in this game, with some newer sounds like Nero's Devilbringer arm and the Yamato Blade. It's still really good with crisp and clear sounds that gamers can understand what type of sound is being emitted. Now let us talk about the voice acting. Nero is voiced by Bleach's Ichigo Kurosaki, Johnny Young Bosch. Trust me, I'll get it done. Now, I understand where there are a lot of people who cannot stand Johnny Young Bosch for his voice work, but he's actually not that bad for voicing Ichigo and Bleach. I mean, it's the same thing as if people think that Miley Flanagan is way too obscure for voicing Naruto, but if you look at her voice work in Naruto Shippuden, she's actually not that bad if you think about it. But I can understand where people don't even like foreign films, animes, or TV shows. I mean, when it's dubbed, it's hard to take it seriously, but when it's subtitled, you have to read your way through what's going on. Yeah, for myself, if I want to read, I'll be sure to get a book so I can read. But I usually prefer dubbing because I want to know what is going on. But I actually do enjoy some dubs and subs together. Well, anyway, let's get back to talking about Johnny Young Bosch's Nero.